I noticed that some of my little seedlings are getting chomped on. And I think I'm gonna make a cover. Maybe get some like plastic milk jugs or something and cut the bottom off to protect these little guys. I love this time of year in the garden because there's just so much anticipation. Every time I come down here, I find something new that's popped up out of the soil. Like these kahu watermelons. Oh, that one got chewed on a little bit too. Eh, that might've been some bin damage. That's part of having little ones playing in the garden. <laughs> smell those flowers? Yeah, smell You say I have to smell these? Mmm, that does smell nice. Yeah, those. Do you need help? You got it? Okay, good deal. Wow, the squash like doubled overnight. We got several inches of rain, ton of rain, the last couple days. Uh, so much so that there's like flooding in the area. They're closing schools for it. It's a mess. And because of that, I didn't really feel comfortable transplanting my tomatoes, so I decided to wait a little while longer. I just didn't want to risk putting them out and it just being too much water. But the things that are planted are like explosive right now because of how much rain they're getting. You say? Got my garden snack. Got your garden snack? What is that, some cabbage leaves? Wait. Yeah, this is just some chard that popped up after winter and it doubled in size. So when we come in and weed these beds, I'll come through and pick anything that I'm not wanting to remain, but that is edible, like that chard. Is that your garden snack? Lemon balm and peppermint? Yeah. Doesn't it smell nice? And I got that. Cabbage. Listen to the creek. You wanna go in there with the chickens? Thank you for holding the gate for me. I don't know if you'll be able to hear our creek, but it is running with all this rain. Go in. The rock's in the way. So broody mama is still broody over here on her pile. And now we have a second broody mama who has claimed a clutch of eggs as her own. So that happened while I was in Washington and Maya just decided to let her have eggs also. So they have, between the two of them, I think like close to 30 eggs, which is a lot. That's one way to grow a flock. I like to let them hatch their own chicks and then raise them. In the past when we've done that, we've lost more than when we brooded them ourselves because we could protect them a little bit more than when they're out here and you know they'll slip away from mom and make it under the fence get lost whatever but you kind of just let nature take its course and you end up with stronger birds I guess someone asked on a comment recently to see Khan and they called him a little puppy here he is Khan he's nine months old and he's doing well he is definitely a big baby um, he's over 100 pounds. He has no uh, spatial recognition at all. He has no idea how big he is. Uh, he can wolf down a sandwich in one gulp and will swallow anything that he puts in his mouth that you th he thinks you may try to take from him. So yeah, he's a good boy though. A little bit of a handful, but like, I remember when Bear was that age, when he was like, in the eight to 10 month range, being like, oh my gosh, how long is this gonna last? And we're kinda in the midst of that with Con right now. He's a really good boy, super sweet, but he's just so, he's such a big puppy. In six months though, I'm fully expecting him to be like, best dog ever status. Is that right, Connie? Is that right? Oh goodness, oh goodness. He's so excited. When he stands up like this, he's as tall as me. He's in the backyard right now um, while we're going around. Bear has climbed over to the goat yard, but they spend a lot of time inside. Hey, farm boy, what are you doing? I want to get. Oh, Gerard, honey, honey, you're a wet mess. Y'all, listen to these sounds Journey Pig makes. <laughs> I would say the pigs have pretty well cultivated this ground. Now that Gerard's got all the good stuff out of it, he's allowing grass to grow back a little bit. We were actually talking about getting like a smallish wood chipper 
because we're about to start tearing down some trees out through the woods and thinning them out uh, to get that space ready for something. Um, and we were talking about mulching those wood chips. I still want to do some gardening back here in this space. I don't know exactly what it's gonna look like this year because it's not as high on the priority list as some of the other things that we're doing. But at the very least, my plan was to plant melons and winter squash and corn uh, throughout here and then do my best to mulch it so that it doesn't get completely overtaken with weeds. Ben just found a little pile of chicken eggs hidden back here. Hmm, makes me wonder if I've got another one that's trying to go broody that she's getting out of the pen and hiding her eggs. You can break broody hens. Uh, typically put them in like a wire bottom cage and like put them in broody timeout until they stop setting. Okay, come on. Uh, we never do. We usually just let it run its course um, by either giving them eggs to hatch or sometimes when we have chicks, either ordered chicks or we've hatched them ourselves, we'll give them over to the moms to raise up. So, I don't know, there, we have had times that we've had like eight broody hens at a time. And it's kind of a pain in the butt because obviously they're, they, they stop laying when they're sitting. So I'm still on kid watch with Miriam and I've noticed that her udder is looking even larger if that were at all possible. <sighs> I really just don't feel much of anything on her ligaments. Her udder has definitely changed since I checked on her this morning. I don't know, my goats have definitely kept me on my toes this year and I've missed every single birth on our farm so far. I think Miriam is really close, judging by the looks of her udder and I don't feel ligaments. I don't know, could be. It could be in the next day or two. I'm walking over next door and look, the pear tree is starting to set fruit. You'll see that. So here are some of our little quaily babies. Y'all have been asking about them. That one right there with the white bottom part of its body, that's my favorite one. We've actually had them over here next door and we've just, building new cages has been on our to-do list. It just hasn't made it to the top of the list yet. However, the bottom started to kind of fall out of one of those cages. Those were given to us secondhand and we've been using them because it's what we had. But the quail cages are quickly climbing to the top of the list. There's a space down underneath um, where you walk out of our basement that is covered and that's where we're planning on putting the quail cages. And actually, I just got a package in the mail that we need to go open um, and it is a quaily package. You got the eggs, dude? Can I see? Oh, nice. Very nice. Do you like, I like that one. I, think, yeah, I like that one too. I think daddy must have grabbed eggs earlier and too. And I like that one too. It's a wet day. I gotta change pants. Yeah, it is. Do you need to change it to some dry pants? No. No. We hatched our quail out like three or four months ago. I can't remember exactly what it was. And we gave a lot of the ones that we hatched away. We hatched like way more than we needed. And we really only wanted to have like 20 to 30 of them. And we still have a bunch of extra males we haven't done anything with. But all of that, like I said, is quickly speeding to the top of the priority list. And because I have a tendency of jumping on things that are really cool <laughs> without getting the infrastructure in place first. Um, I follow this guy on Instagram and his name on there is Fat Hen Farms. And he just started a YouTube channel. Really cool dude. Like he is into uh, genetics of breeding birds, which I think is really, really neat. And a little while ago, he started posting these photos of these tiny, tiny birds. And then shortly after of their tiny, tiny eggs. And I was like, what is this wonderful <laughs> creature I need to know? And they're button quail. And I thought that my quail eggs were small, but look at these. So he posts these pictures on Instagram of gathering all these tiny eggs and he gathers them in this tiny basket. And I was like, oh, I need it, I need that. And so I figured, well, since we are already going to be 
uh, building a new quail cage, maybe we can build an extra little cage. I may just buy one for these because these are really just a pet project. There's not any sort of like growing food reason to keep button quail, they're so tiny. But I really just want to try them. And he sent me some eggs to hatch and they're all individually wrapped. So this is gonna take a minute. <laughs> We're gonna hatch some button quail. So for comparison, regular quail egg, button quail egg. So cute and they're so, they look like this looks like Easter candy like for real I think that if I left this sitting on the counter this time of year somebody might eat it It started raining again, and so my light is no good. I don't think you can really get a good picture of the color of these. I don't know, that's pretty good. They're very pretty blues and greens. So beautiful. So I had 30, and then I stuck my finger through one. I'm 29 now. I'm really impressed that not a single one was cracked in transit. They're really, really beautiful. I can't get over how tiny they are. So I'm gonna let these sit for 24 hours, just like this on the tray. I'm gonna um, put it in a safe place away from my children so that the eggs can sit undisturbed at room temperature for the entirety of that 24 hour period. And then I'm gonna put them in the incubator, which means that these guys are gonna be hatching just a couple of days before I go to Baker Creek for the planting festival. For those of you wondering like why get button quail, um, we keep our other quail for eggs. We have not kept those for meat yet. A lot of people tell me that it's great and that we would love it. We just haven't really processed a lot of our own meat. So we haven't done that. We've just kept them for eggs. We eat a lot of eggs. The button quail, this is mostly just me being curious and enamored with tiny cute things. Yeah, totally had me in the tiny basket of little pretty colorful eggs. Well, that's all. I don't know. It'll be a fun experiment, and I'm glad to share it with y'all. What do you think, Benny? Do you like these tiny eggs? Yeah, you got the instructions. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. God bless you. Until next time.